a student asked me a question about indexing. The question goes, can I edit my table? Can I create rows, delete rows, update rows while I am running a create index operation on a set of columns? So the question was a little bit more detailed. Like, can I update a field that I'm not indexing? Can I add a row that I'm not really touching any of the columns that I'm indexing? But the, the question, while it sound, might sound simple, it, it made me think about the implementation details of how actually this works. So I thought I'll make a video about that. Let's discuss. So if you don't know, create index is a SQL standard uh, which allows you to specify a collection of fields, you know, so one field or more, and create another completely data, complete data structure. Often this is a B plus tree structure that allows you to uh, short circuit your way to specific sets of rows. You know, very powerful data structure. But in order to create an index, uh, you really need to read the table. So let's say I have a, uh, an employee table and I want to create an index on the salary. It's a dumb index, but let's say I have it there, right? So that double column, I want to create an index on it. So the operation, if you would have to build it, I always tell my students that, try to build it yourself. Forget about the literature and the computer science and the professors and the books. Forget about all that. Build it yourself. You're a programmer. You know how to build this. Let's build it. Let's build an index. Well, you know, to do that, I need to read all the salaries that exist in that column. I have to. That's how we. That's the beginning stage. And here's le and here lies the first problem. You're reading something that is constantly changing, right? Because the table is being, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an OLTP system. It's an online transactional system. People changing, committing, rolling back, uh, database crashing. You have a bunch of rows that you're not supposed to read to begin with and you're, you should not read it. You know, all of that stuff you have to take into consideration. So most people said, all right, well, of course, the credit index, I'm not going to go into the details of how the B3 looks like. Of course, when you read after, after you read all the salaries, you build your nice B3s. I have a whole, you know, uh, videos about that, right? So you build that nice tree and then to the right is the larger values, to the left is the smaller values. And finally, the, uh, the leaf, you put a key value pair where the key is your salary the value is what really matters which is the row pointer where is that full row because you really don't care about the actual value of salary you want to get back to the row where that salary existed so that's that's one part of it but the problem here is really reading the reading part of it and really the main reason why we can't allow create index concurrently with writes is because we're going to miss edits. We're going to miss some writes. We're going to miss some rows. Why? Here's an example. So I'm reading, creating an index. I'm reading and reading and reading. And then someone went and inserted a row way in the beginning of the table. I missed it. So if I continue and I ignore that, I'm committed my index. It's in the catalog. So the planner will start using it. So if someone starts looking up for the value for that row, it won't be in my index because I missed it. And that is data corruption. That's mainly the reason why create index cannot uh, allow concurrent rights, right? But there are, there are ways around it. We're going to talk about that as well. Most database vendors say, all right, let's just block. You can't do anything. If I am about to create an index on a column, you can't add you cannot update you cannot delete anything no? so the create index uh, acquires a special kind of lock that we call it conflict with updates delete and insert 
and for that matter even select for updates and but most databases that I know of you cannot do any edits but you can continue to read right so once you create an index that operation blocks everything else right so that the create index takes finite amount of time it builds your structure and then it, it commits and done and then it releases that special lock so that other operations can continue that's why creating an index can be expensive right so as a result uh, it blocks other operations right and people don't like that like imagine you're doing an insert and all of a sudden your your, your transaction is blocked it's like what's going on by block i mean it's just waiting there right? so in a production system people often don't use create on decks like online like that right but most of the time this won't work so we need another way to create an index that is concurrent with edits and that's why postgres have to create index concurrently you know which allows you to edit you allows you to insert and update and delete so that's where the, that question came to my mind all right i know that while you do create an index you cannot edit the table. i say when i say edit i mean insert update it's just that's a that's a gis thingy like we say edit and that's what i mean by edit right uh it might not be a database thingy but that's a, the terminology that is but create index concurrently allows it to do that allows you to edit the table the question is how well here's one method that i've done if i want to implement something like that i don't know the implementation of how create index can run concurrently with other edits that doesn't make any sense if you think about it because like, that that's really dangerous right so they must have solved it in a way such that it does not cause a problem but here's the thing if you read the documentation of create index concurrently it's almost two times slower than the actual create index why well let's talk about that so so if i were to implement this i at the moment of create index i would take note of the last committed uh, wall entry which is the right ahead log that's how i would do it this is where the last time is actually something has changed in the database i'm reading this the snapshot almost i'm reading a snapshot at this particular moment right and then i'm gonna read everything in that table right and i'm gonna build my index normally at the end i'm gonna evaluate of course meanwhile people have edited my table people inserted deleted right so now i need to revise i'm gonna get a brand new what's called i think it's called lsm log sequence number duh right so i'm gonna get that log sequence number the new one because it has changed and then based on the diffs of what has changed between my beginning lsn and the current lsn i will read only those changes and will apply them again so this changes is way should be way smaller than the entire table of course right so i'm gonna start applying the index again it's like as if someone is just changing this new index in the fly right all right and I, i'm gonna do this before i do that i'm actually gonna take note of the lat, last lsn right and then do that operation then after i apply these divs i'm gonna check again did someone actually make changes between my last and my the new one right and of course it might actually be that the fact that more people actually made this changes so we'll do this again and again and again so there might be a chance that it, with this implementation a create index and currently will never finish right but it will catch up eventually that's my guess at least right? but the thing is we really cannot make the index available for use until we completely sure that we are absolutely done 
that moment where we're absolutely at the end of the index the, the last log segment is the same as the last log segment from the my, from the from when i actually started then i know that oh nobody nobody changed quick let's commit and when we commit we actually commit the catalog changes like the metadata and then all of a sudden boom this index became available online okay? and of course that's how i think about it and that's how you implement it and then it kind of explain why create index concurrently is slow now I, I like to do this kind of thing to to see how i would write something because when i look at the thing uh, most of the time my implementation is atrocious <laughs> right and i went uh, way the way wrong but it will be interesting to look at this and actually compare it with the actual implementation because post is open source we can actually look at the code and see how they implemented it but yeah guys that's how i want to talk about here create index create index concurrently right almost always production use create index concurrently to actually add uh, an index or while on active actively right while the database is being actively edited all right guys that was that's all for me today See you in the next one.